Well, I got my first tattoo in 1973 when I was 13. And that was done by a guy called Rob Robinson in New Malden in Surrey. And it was in the days when, in 1969, we had the Miners Act come out where you couldn't be tattooed unless you was 18. So, of course, we all lied about our ages and that. And he didn't know we were than 18, although he might have done, you know. But I just fell in love with it. It was like a drug. I needed it more and more each time. I was going down there every week and I just fell in love with the magic of it, everything about it. You know, it was like... Uh, it was a bit rebellious and a bit dangerous and the guys who were in the shop were a bit sort of like on the edge and it was just the sort of people I like to hang around with, you know. No, it's, it's, it's still the same for me and it's a different dynamic in regards to, I hear lots of people say there's no characters in the game no more, but for these youngsters in it now, their characters are going to be in 30, 40 years time when I've gone. And it's like the characters I grew up with will always be characters to me. It's still the same, it's just uh, relevant, you know. Uh, to me personally, I think the art form is the best it's ever going to be and the greatest it's ever going to be because, I mean, some of the kids I'm seeing who we haven't even seen in the magazines yet because they haven't been discovered are doing absolute fantastic work. Whereas when I first got into it, it was more like, uh, how can you say, stamps? It was like uh, Love Arts, Anchors, Eagles, but to me that's always tattooing. I mean, I love the new stuff today, but to me it's not really tattooing, it's more of an art form, where to me I still love the old geisha girl, sort of, like I say, the love art and the anchors and the things, true love, mum and dad. That's why a lot of my work, people regard it as not very nice work, but it's the sort of stuff I like, you know. Well, all sorts of different reasons, really. I think some, most of it, I believe, is to belong to something. It's like joining the Freemasons or joining a, a bike club or a motorcycle, uh, motor car club. You just want to belong to something. And as you probably could see yourself, this is like a little world. And we have our own conventions and people interview you on tape and talk to you on radio. You know, it's a sort of, it's a, it's a wonderful world when you can be in something where you can see yourself in a magazine or on the telly, you know, it's, it's quite fascinating really. That's always fascinated me, how it's become so popular, because when I first got involved, I was regarded as a real low life, you know. I was, my friends were out collecting football cards and football programmes and their parents were telling them to keep away from me because I was the weirdo down the street, because I had 14 tattoos by the time I was 14 and the school wanted to expel me and things like that, you know. And I went to Lord Bonza School, it was quite a good school, public school, you know. But I was a good rugby player, so... <laughs> I was there for the rugby more than the academic situation, you know. Well, myself personally, I think it's changed because people like David Beckham and pop stars and... You open the newspaper nowadays and you see it everywhere and you see it on the TV. It's just that... Uh, it's not so mysterious no more, and it's, it's when people don't understand something, that's when they're scared of it. I mean, when I was 19, I could walk into a post office and the old girls would sort of move out of the way. But now I walk in, they all say, oh, you must have been in the Navy, because I'm older. You know, it's sort of... That's what I mean. When people are scared of something, it's like talking about motorcycle gangs now. People think, oh, but if you're in a motorcycle gang, it's OK, you know. You know, it's, it's hard to explain, really. It's why people get it and why people do it, because it's, it's not pleasant for, well, it's not pleasant for me getting them done. Of course, cool, it puts my teeth on edge, even when I get a little tattoo now, you know. I think, what am I doing here? Yeah. Well, it's under the big umbrella, we're all in the same sort of gang. It's like, if you notice at these conventions, you'll get black people, you'll get Indian people, you'll get, you'll get all sorts of different gangs and cultures who probably wouldn't even talk in real life, but under one roof, we're all a tattooed tribe. Uh, that's what I've noticed about tattooing. It's always been a sort of like a real big community and there's never really ever been any trouble because we all belong to the same thing. But primarily, it's like in New Zealand with the Maoris and other tribes out in the South Seas, it's a religious thing, you know. And it's tribal, but when we're all together, it's like we're all together. I can't explain it really, it's sort of, if I can make, if I'm making sense about, like when we're all together it's a big club, but when we're separate we're in our own clubs, you know. I think they are, the people, it's, it's like, how can I say it, it's, half of us are into the tattoo history and tradition, and half of us are into the rock star and sort of want to be seen, but 
there is still an awful lot of people out there who are into the tradition of tattooing, and as you know, it goes back a lot and go back to 325 AD, myself personally, when it's banned as a pagan practice, you know. And it went underground to about 787, you know. And then, of course, when Captain Cook and William Dampier and all that went to the South Seas and brought it back, you know. It's always been one of the oldest art forms known to man, as well as cave painting. We always sort of marked ourselves to change ourselves, whether that's like today's scarification, tattooing, or even body modification. Even women with having silicone implants, it's still, we're still changing our appearance. And I'm sure we're the only animals that do that, you know, apart from chameleons and that. You know. Well, it's making people look at us as true artists, more so than just tattoo artists, because there's still that stigma, oh, you're just a tattoo artist, you know. But believe me, a majority of people downstairs and what you're going to see when you're filming, they can paint and draw. It's just because it's on the skin. And of course, skin goes when we go. I mean, in 50 years' time when us three are dead, this building's still going to be here, you know. It's, it's, that's the way I look at things. That exhibition at Somerset House, absolute fantastic paintings, but you're not going to get many tattoo fans buying them paintings, but they would buy them if they could have it on the skin, you know. But to me, absolutely fantastic, because I'm into a lot of art in general, you know. I like it, because I mean, like Jeff Coombs out in New York, obviously, with the Andy Warhol connection and all that. I mean, I knocked around with Warhol and John michel Basquiat in the 80s, because I used to go over to the factory. Well, that's another life I've got. But Damien Hurst, fair enough, he's doing it and he's putting it to the public's attention, but he is more of, he is getting into it to jump on a bandwagon, although he don't really need to jump on a bandwagon. I mean, when he can sell a, a skull with 95 million pounds worth of diamonds in it, I mean, why does he want to make around with tattooing? It's just a fad. I mean, I'm sure you're going to get the Tracy Emmons tattoo soon, you know. But of course, it, you've got to understand that because Every piece of art is a fad. There's going to be something else in five years' time. That's why uh, our tattooing can be a little bit dangerous if you see it as a fashion statement, because it's not like a T-shirt where you can buy now and throw away in a couple of weeks' time. You've got it for life. And no matter what they say about how they can take a tattoo off, they're still going to, you're still going to be marked. Even if they cover it, you're still going to have the mark. That's why I do say to, to kids who want tattoo, if you want it for a fashion statement, have it done where it can't be seen. The only trouble is nowadays a lot of these kids want it on their necks, hands and on their faces and nothing on their bodies. When I first got into it, if you ever had your hands tattooed or your neck, you had to make sure your body was quiet because a tattooist just wouldn't entertain you. No, no. No matter what you do, you've got to consider other people in this life. I don't, you know, I know a lot of people say, no, you don't, but to me, you do. I mean, if I was offending you by sitting here like this, I would put a shirt on if we was in company, you know. Not because I'm sort of... Uh, ashamed of my tattooing, but it's just to be fair play, you know. I've, I've got the Guinness World Record for the biggest tattoo memorabilia collection in the world, but I've got 125,000 slide photos, 9,000 uh, paper photos, just over 900 machines, and various other bits of paraphernalia. I collect a lot of articles and uh, books and things like that, but like, Everyone who knows me, they know I'm a bit of a fanatic for it. But I actually like it because uh, it's took me all over the world and I go to many exhibitions and museums and help curate exhibitions and things like that. The first business card I ever got when I went into Rob Robinson's in 1973 and I'd done collector's lot program, they said to me, what's the, what's the most valuable thing in this room and I said that business card on the wall they said how much is that worth I said a penny if it's worth anything and they said well why is it I said because it's not how valuable it is it's what it means to me and I remember Rob Robinson to this day giving me that card and I'm thinking this is magic you know and I've got some real expensive stuff I've got machines worth three and four thousand dollars and things but I would swap them every day for that card you know yeah because a lot of people have said to me over the years, Paul, you know all the best tattooists in the world and you've got all rubbish on you. And they say, why is that? And I say the same thing, is because I only get tattooed off people I like. And I've been tattooed by members of my family and people who's never tattooed before because I just want the mark. To me, the tattooing is more of a mark than an actual picture. It's like I've got tattoos of ex-wives and things like that. They mean more to me than what 
an Ed Hardy piece would mean, even though I'd love to have a big Hardy, Ed Hardy piece. But you know what I mean? I'm more in it for the history and the memories. To me, it's like an inky diary. It's like, I can tell, if you said to me, when you had that done at 14, what was you going through? And I look at it, it's got rock and roll. I was into rock and roll music. In a love art, I love rock and roll music. Whereas everyone expects to see me with a beautiful Philip U dragon and things like that. But I've been tattooed by Philip, but I'm more into it for a mark as, as a piece just to say, look at me. I've got the best in the world, you know. It's like, it's like having a car and thinking, I'm quite happy with a Rover. I don't need a Rolls Royce, even though I haven't got a Rover. But you know what I mean? To me, it's just a car, you know. It's just another vehicle to get you somewhere, you know.